So in essence, Factorio is like programming. Let me show it to you. So the first thing that both Factorio and programming have in, in common is that you start with basically nothing. So you don't have anything at all. You start with an empty project and all you have is the remnants of your previous project. <laughs> You can reuse some components from it, of course, but mostly you're usually starting from scratch. Obviously, you have some knowledge about uh, what you need to do and uh, you have some tools available for you. But generally, if this project is worth anything at all, then it hasn't been done before and you feel like you're on a new planet every time. Yeah, you basically start with nothing and you start fully from scratch. Uh, obviously, you don't collect wood to start writing code, uh, but you start with basics usually. So you start with hello world, you make a chest or something. So yeah, you start with hello world. And then you start thinking about how you will lay out your first iteration of your project. And you start, usually you start small and you don't do much. Obviously, the goals of factorial and of programming are different. In programming, you are usually tasked with automating something that is already there and that is a manual process, like chopping wood in this case. There is a huge demand to automate it. So as a programmer, your job is to write a program that automates something that already exists, but is usually done manually. In the first stages of your project, you don't have much. So you do a lot of stuff by hand and you run very simple automation that is still very useful even in the early stages. It's in real life. Your most valuable resource is time and not iron, memory, disk space. The main asset that we have is our time and how we spend it and what do we do affects our productivity a lot and whether or not we can complete the task in one hour or in one month. Another thing that uh, people commonly do is download someone else's blueprints that we call frameworks and libraries in programming so that you don't have to think about what you are going to do and how you are going to implement things that someone else has already done. So they are usually very helpful. Usually, as in Factorio, in programming, there is no rush in doing anything as quickly as possible. You can take your time and think about what you are going to do and actually enjoy the process as well. Eventually, you are going to learn a lot of key combinations that will help you to navigate the world quicker or your project quicker and to write code more efficiently. Some people even prefer the editors that are specifically designed to be controlled via keyboard. Also, it is usually important to know how your automation works so that if it stalls or if it breaks, you can manually turn it on. Otherwise, there is no real benefit from having automation if you don't know how to fix it. At some point, you might realize that what you are doing is not very efficient and that you need to choose another technology altogether for you to move forward. Usually, more efficient technologies require a lot of effort to start using them, and they can be clunky and complex to set up. But in the end, it is usually worth it. Also, as in Factorio, there is a huge speedrun community in programming as well, although they compete not in how much time they need to complete a certain task, but in how much they can accomplish in the certain amount of time. However, the idea is similar. And similarly, as in Factorio, the speedrunners are actually usually not the best players in the game, although they often see themselves as ones. As in Factorio, in programming, there are different strategies to actually writing code or creating projects in general. Some people like 
minimalistic approaches and like to write as little amount of code as possible to achieve a certain goal, whereas others prefer to build infinitely scalable and infinitely extendable systems that are usually not as efficient but can achieve other goals more quickly. Interestingly enough, uh, the most productive programmers are usually very lazy and tend to automate everything even the most mundane tasks that you would not think of automating at all. On the other hand, the most hardworking Factoria players who like to do a lot of work and to uh, do stuff manually and to put a lot of time and effort into things are not always the most successful players. Another very important trait that programmers usually have is the ability to diagnose complex issues. For example, how to determine why your electric grid is not working. Also one thing that is very prominent in Factorio and in programming is having legacy systems working side by side with the newer ones and legacy systems struggling with the increased demand but still working because why replace stuff that works? Still, refactoring is very important, and if you don't do it, then your base or code base will become a mess. And in reality, it's not always possible or even not desirable to ever stop improving your system. And basically, that's the whole point of the game, is to build stuff even more efficiently and save even more money. However, it is often that you can get bored with working on one thing and you can try completely another. And that's also fine. Also, as in Factorio, doing stuff by hand quickly becomes exponentially more and more complex, so you have to build automation to achieve certain things. Automating routine tasks also frees up your time and your brain power to concentrate on stuff that actually matters. Productivity of different people can vary very significantly. It is very common to see people who can achieve 10 times more than others with the same amount of time. And of course, you always start with researching automation. That's out of the question. However, you would be surprised to learn that a lot of stuff in programming and in Factory as well is often not automated. And the reason for it is that to automate some things takes much more effort than actually doing them by hand, even if you don't like it. So you need to make sure that you understand the trade-offs between doing stuff by hand and doing it once and automating things that actually matter. What is also common is that in general in programming and in factorial as well, there is no real end goal for the game. And the real reason why people are doing it, it is not to earn money or fame or something, but just because they enjoy it. And people who are very good at it are usually the ones who actually do enjoy the game. It doesn't mean, however, that this is not work. It definitely is. It is also often beneficial to think through what you are going to do before actually starting implementing it, otherwise you will have to tear everything down and rebuild it from scratch. It is also very important to understand when you need to do this, and don't be shy to actually destroy what you wrote and what you created and replace it with the more efficient things. This is what makes you a good engineer in general. Knowing math and understanding math is also very beneficial for the most part. So in this case you can see that the gears are manufactured much more quickly than the research packs. So this means that you can have several factories for science packs per one gear pack. Eventually you will encounter bugs and they will be somewhat easy to deal with at first. But the bigger your project is Eventually, we'll discover bugs. 
And initially they are very easy to kill. But it won't always be the case. Actually, they are not that easy, even in the beginning of the game. It is therefore very important to discover bugs before they are a problem. It is also important to use appropriate tools whenever possible and to make sure that you can bootstrap your system if something goes wrong. So I'm using a burner inserter here because if we ever run out of coal, I can just insert coal into the chest and then everything else will be powered automatically. The same applies if we run out of power for some reason, so if something consumes too much, the burner inserters power themselves, so they will continue working. Balance is also very important. You shouldn't ignore certain parts of the game just because you think there are more important things to do. You should always keep an eye on everything that is happening and make sure that issues are addressed as soon as possible. As in programming, adding more players to the game doesn't necessarily improve the overall efficiency of the factory or of the project that you're working on. So if you add 10 times more players, you won't get your factory built 10 times more quickly. And if you add too many players to the game, you can even slow it down. Adding more hardware, on the other hand, can improve things. With more knowledge gained, the problems that you thought were, were impossible before now become completely possible, and somewhat easy even. With more knowledge and experience, the issues that we, you struggled with will become very easy. And you will not understand how anyone could struggle with this problem. Some solutions couldn't be solved with brute force though. Alright guys, I hope I was able to convince you that Factorio and programming have a lot in common. And actually, I do think that good Factorio players probably can become good programmers. And the other way around. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please press the like button. If you don't want to see videos like this, you probably didn't watch until the end, so this information will not be relevant to you. Thank you for watching and goodbye.